everyone and welcome to the University of Dundee Master of Education webinar. My name is Helen Sparopoulos and I'm the Admissions Manager at Stafford Associates. And joining me this evening all the way from the University of Dundee is Marie. Good evening to you, Marie. Good evening, Helen and everybody else. It's lovely to be here with you tonight. Good, and I'm looking on my right hand side here and I can see there's quite a lot of you that have joined us um, and uh, actually I can see there's a few from, from Africa as well, so welcome uh, this evening to this webinar. How we are going to conduct the webinar this evening is I'm just going to briefly introduce you to Stafford, what our function is. I'm then going to hand you over to Marie, who is going to discuss the program. And towards the end of the presentation, you will have the opportunity to type out any questions that you would like to ask Marie or myself. Um, however, what I am going to do is I'm going to group the questions together simply because a lot of your questions are identical. Uh, so do look out for the answers to, to your questions. Okay, so let's get started. Now, who is Stafford Associates? Well, Stafford was established in 1993, and we are a resource centre for distance learning education. Um, we have uh, been in this industry for over 25 years, and uh, we're also a resource centre for uh, places such as India as well as in Africa. Uh, we currently are a resource centre for five UK universities, one of which is the University of Dundee. Now we do offer a variety of programmes through these universities, ranging from certificates to diplomas, bachelors, MBAs, right through until doctorates. And our function here is to assist students throughout their application process. So the mere fact that you have joined us here this evening means that you have been in touch with one of our experienced academic consultants. So we will assist you throughout the administration process as well as the application process and get that very important unconditional offer for you. I'm now going to hand you over to Marie, and I will be joining you again towards the end of the webinar. Over to you, Marie. Thank you very much, Helen. Thank you. Hello and welcome, everybody. So my name is Marie, and I'm one of the lecturers here, um, module lead for the leadership module. And I'm also the lead for any students undertaking their uh, studies by a Stafford associate. So welcome. We're going to start off tonight by just a brief discussion to introduce the university before I move on to what it means to be an MED student and introduce you to the programme. So Dundee University, who are we? Um, we are a university who we know makes an impact and we deliver impact, our students make an impact um, across different discipline boundaries um, and that's evident here in the School of Education and Social Work, so we have more than one discipline within the school itself. Um, and we adopt our enterprising approach, uh, which is embedded throughout our curriculum. Um, and that's not just locally here in Scotland, so, you know, we have students all over the world and we have staff working across the globe as well. So uh, we are a modern university uh, working towards uh, solutions for those 21st century problems, which can often be very complex problems, um, but we help to give skills to our students to be able to deal with those. And so we do transform lives and we do that through uh, sharing knowledge creation along with sharing and application of that in information. So we're very much working towards you and your practice and linking that into the theory. We have um, an excellent global reputation. Um, so if you're asking why Dundee, um, as you can see from the listings there, um, we are frequently placed highly in the university rankings and we are very proud of our rankings. We have a substantial global reputation with students from over 150 countries around the world. 
And in addition, no matter where in the world you're studying from, we do promote a real sense of community. Uh, and we feel this is what sets us apart from some of the other universities. And that certainly comes through uh, from our student feedback as well. So uh, at Dundee, we can offer you a learning experience with, with one of the world's top 200 universities. And we'll offer you, of course, within that excellent teaching, learning, support and resources as well. Okay, so what is the MED? Um, well, this is a suite of modules, now 11, 11 postgraduate modules um, in professional development for educators who work in a relevant setting. So that can be from early years right the way through to higher education. It could be for people in public sector schools or private schools or people working from home and so on. So, Please do note, though, that although the MED is recognised by the General Teaching Council, um, it's not a teaching qualification, it's a professional development qualification. And as different national governments have different prerequisites for teaching, you are advised to check with the relevant governing or government or registering body. Okay, we treat all students um, equally on, on the um, programme, so that doesn't matter whether you are undertaking the study as part-time or a fast-track student, um, and the differences here does allow some flexibility and some autonomy, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Um, it is a blended learning opportunity, so that means that while we deliver materials, the reading materials um, online um, through uh, computer web-based uh, platform. We do also offer the face-to-face -face, um, communication. So again, whether that's virtually in a similar way that you're receiving this tonight or whether it's through the face-to-face -face workshops. And again, I'll talk about those shortly as well. Okay, um, as I say, uh, we are internationally recognised postgraduates qualification uh, within education um, and we are recognised by the International Baccalaureate as well. We have lots of different routes and foci throughout the programme, so I'll start talking you through these shortly. So it is quite a complex programme that offers you lots of different opportunities. So, as I mentioned, it's a programme of study that brings together the theory with your practice and it encourages you to draw on your experiences and then align them with the literature. It enables you to question why we do certain things and whether there are alternative ways where practice can be enhanced. All of which help to develop or extend your confidence. Um, and also to enhance your professional career. As tutors, we are continuously seeing our students practice being influenced by their learning at master's level, and this inevitably uh, benefits staff, uh, students and st the staff who you are working alongside. So not just you as you move forward and make progress, but obviously you will then influence those who you are working with. So, what can you expect from us if you join us on the MED programme? As I say, uh, a lot of the work and the online learning and teaching is available through a platform called My Dundee. Uh, but we also offer um, online tutorials with the module tutor. In the first instance, that could be by email, but then we can also offer drop-in sessions or one-to-one -one sessions virtually. We have those face-to-face -face workshops. But also we offer formative assessment opportunities on all of the modules that you, that you study, uh, which means that you can take a section of your final assessment and obtain some feedback on that section and that will help you then with your final submission. And also we have the Academic Skills Centre who offers support with academic writing. Um, Lots of support actually um, that they offer from whether that's just um, how to 
phrase certain things or whether that is referencing skills and lots of different areas of academic writing. Okay, so let's just have a little look at the different programs that are, are on offer. Um, I was a Master of Education, but in what? Um, and I would, first of all, we have our what we call the generic um, qualification or pathway, and that's a Master of Education in leading, and, leading Learning and Teaching, and that offers lots of flexibility. And um, also we have specialities, um, so maybe the, you want to specialise in educational leadership, international education, inclusive education, or nursery early education. So you would just um, obtain one specialism there. Okay, so as I say, these offer, the leading learning teaching does offer lots of flexibility, but there's also flexibility within the other named awards as well. So within that, um, depending on which route you take, we do have a range of optional modules listed there. Um, and these each of these optional modules enables you to carry out the study and the assignment within a workplace environment, as long as you have um, relevant teaching um, practice to be able to reflect on, it will also offer you opportunities to to carry these out if you're not currently in that workplace environment as well. So these are all 30 credit modules and if you take a part-time route these will take place over 20 weeks which is one semester. Uh, if you take um, the fast track route you will be required to complete 60 credits with us so that's two single mod modules within one semester. Okay so uh, if you take the generic MED, so the MED in Leading Learning Teaching, you, then you can opt for any of these modules. If you decide to take a specialism, then your, these modules will link to that specialism. So, for example, if you used to take an MED in Educational Leadership, then you would be required to take the Leadership and Organisational Development module as well. You will also need to specialise your dissertation in that area. So for educational leadership, then your dissertation must also have an educational leadership focus. And just to clarify a little bit what I've said, and um, to give you a little bit more information here, because like I say, there's lots of different routes through, so it can become uh, quite complicated, but that's just to be able to give you lots of opportunity. Um, so just to demonstrate how the named awards and the modules link, uh, you can see that, again, the generic reading, learning and teaching award at the top offers, you can have any two optional modules in that. And then the dissertation, it can be any educational topic that's relevant to your practice or perhaps what you're aspiring to. And then as again, through that example that I've just worked through that previously if you take educational leadership then your optional module is, will have to be leadership and organizational development plus a further optional of course there will be some changes in this if you come in with some credits where uh, which awards you some exemption but again that we look at that on an individual basis and you can see for the named awards that your dissertation topic has to be relevant to that named award. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, um, we do also offer the international baccalaureate so qualifications. Um, the first of the, the three there is the certificates in leadership practice. Now, the IB doesn't require any prerequisites to undertake that. So if you are not in an IB school currently, but are aspiring to work in an IB, or it could be an, an opportunity for you in the future, then that may be worthwhile you taking that. It's certainly a, a very popular certificate for our students who are not currently in an IB school or it may be that you have recently started working in an IB school. Because the next certificate, the Advanced Certificate in Leadership Research, that offers two different pathways, depending on how much experience you have in an IB. 
So pathway one, again, doesn't have any prerequisites, but you would need to take the certificate in leadership practice first. Uh, but pathway two, you could jump straight to this pathway if you have three years teaching experience in an IB school. And the advanced certificates in learning and teaching research, um, that there's the one pathway there and the IB do require you to have three years teaching experience to undertake that award. And just to work through an example here, um, this is on a typical part-time route. So if somebody comes in, uh, a student comes in wanting to undertake their studies, a part-time student and does not have any credit exemption. This is what it would look like to work towards that IB advanced teaching and learning, which you have three years teaching experience for. So in year one, you will take two 30 credit modules. That's a reflection upon practice in your first optional module. Of course, you do have an opportunity to exit there with a postgraduate certificate, but that would not allow eligibility for the IB advanced teaching and learning research award. You must complete the full MEd to be eligible for that. So year two, then you would take undertake the second optional module plus the research methods. And then finally in year three, it's our double credit module uh, where you would undertake the dissertation module, which is 60 credits. Okay. And if you are going into the via the IB leadership route um, and you perhaps don't have the three years teaching experience in an IB school, uh, this is the way that you would work through the, the program. Uh, year one, either you would study leadership and organizational development on the first semester, and then the second semester you would work towards reflection upon leadership in the IB. Now, you could exit there with a postgraduate certificates with those 60 credits, and you would be eligible for the IB Leadership Practice Award. But if you want the advanced level, then you must complete the full MEG to obtain eligibility for that. So year two, then you take your second optional module and the research methods. And then year three is the dissertation, but it must have a leadership um, focus plus an IB focus. The IB must come through. Okay, just to give you a little bit of information on the difference with the study uh, times, whether you're part-time or fast-track, uh, the key difference here is that you double up for the fast track. So you would undertake a total of 60 credits in one semester as opposed to 30 credits for the part-time route in one semester. The fast track option is a significant undertaking and I strongly advise you to consider whether you have the space and the time to complete approximately 30 hours of study per week. However, if you decide upon this option, but then you feel that it's too much, or too overwhelming, we can transfer you onto the part-time route at the start of each semester. That's something that you could uh, discuss with us. Equally, if you undertake start on the part-time route, but then feel that you could double upon that study, or maybe that you decide that to take a career break, for example, um, we can transfer you again at certain times in the semester onto the fast track route. Okay, so there is some flexibility within the programme for study duration as well. Okay, I mentioned workshops earlier. These are optional, but highly recommended. And these, this time, are due to take place on Friday the 2nd and 3rd of November. Uh, they are a fantastic opportunity to meet with other students as well as some of the tutors. And it's a space for us to start building that sense of community. And we do know how much our students value that sense of community. Uh, the induction workshop 
will provide you with an opportunity to obtain an understanding of the various mechanisms with the university's online learning platforms and how to access the online library and the various opportunities for support. It will also enable you to develop an understanding for critical reading, thinking and writing that's required for master's level. Feedback from these is always excellent. Students find them very worthwhile and beneficial to moving forward with their studies. Um, and say the feedback, whether that's written feedback or verbal feedback is excellent. So they do come highly recommended, not just from us as, as tutors, but also from your fellow students who have gone before you. Okay, so entry requirements to the programme. Um, for all routes, you must have an undergraduate degree. That can be in any discipline, and doesn't have to be an educational related discipline. Um, if, but if your undergraduate degree was not taught in English, then the English requirement is an academic IELTS of 6.5 or equivalent. We also require you to either be working within um, a relevant setting at the moment if you want to take the workplace-based route or if you are not currently working in an educational environment at the moment then you would undertake the non-workplace-based route but you must have had substantial previous work experience in education um, to be able to reflect on and draw from. Okay, so we can see some of the feedback here from our students. Um, I would say one of the, I think for us as tutors, what we really see, what we enjoy seeing is just how much undertaking the study has altered somebody's practice, that it has an impact in their practice. And then obviously the, the students at the end, the end users are the ones who benefit from that. Um, you know, and that's why we enjoy working with you and doing what we do. Okay, the tuition fees, um, see them there on the screen along with the application deadline of the 28th of October. Uh, please ask your academic consultant or staff for a breakdown of the tuition fees and the instalment schemes and they will provide you with further information on that. Now, Helen has timed that perfectly, as always, to come and join me for any questions that you might have. Thank you, Marie. It was uh, very informative. And I can see that there are quite a few questions that have come through already. So I'm going to ask uh, Muhammad's question first. Uh, Muhammad's question is, I'm wondering if you can help me on this. I'm intending to do my full M.Ed. program. However, I want to start with my PGCE and then I will decide to carry on. However, my question is, can I choose to do the leading learning and teaching with RB certificate in leadership and practice or do I choose the advanced certificate in leadership research? Okay, if you are going to do the PG certificate, first of all, and you're not sure at that, this moment in time if you are going to do the full MN, but that's what you're opting for first, then you would have to go for the IB practice certificate. But then if you decide to continue and you can have a five year break, um, we would hope that you would continue much quicker than that and continue uh, with your studies, then you can then opt to undertake the advanced IB certificate. Um, so you will have the two at the end. Um, so the original certificate in practice plus the advanced. Um, and lots of our students do do that. Excellent. And uh, David's question is, I have looked at the specialisations and I'm quite interested in a few of them. Is there any possibility that I can do two specialisations? 
I'm afraid not, no. Um, and I know sometimes it's really difficult to choose because, you know, the different interests that we have and sometimes giving options is a good thing, um, but it can make it a little bit difficult to start with just to choose which of them that you want to head for. But no, it is just the one specialism because that's the point of us being master of education. You show your master's nurse in that area and you do that through the one specialized subject. Okay, and Susan's question is, uh, when do I actually do this RB certificate? Do I do it together with my program or do I do it at the end of my program? No, you, this is all within the program, um, so you're not doing any additional work, there's no additional assignments for this or no exams, and I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but we don't have any exams, uh, everything's written assignments, but it's built into the assignments, so to obtain the IB eligibility, you will be drawing from some of the literature, the, the IB publications, um, so we're really not expecting you to do anything over and above somebody who isn't um, undertaking an IB. It'll be just slightly different readings that you will use. Okay, and Venetia's question is, um, well, first of all, she's saying thank you very much for the wonderful informative <laughs> session, Marie. Um, and uh, her question is, I'm planning to start with the PGC. And my question is, I'd like to teach art in a primary school. So is this level actually okay to do so? Is this a possibility? This level of studies for teaching across any subject area, we don't specialize in on teaching subject areas. So I'm not sure if that's what you're asking me there as well. Um, so we, it is a professional development program rather than a teaching practice certificate. So there are differences there. So I'm not sure what where you're coming from as in, um, have you already got a teaching practice certificate? But it is appropriate for anybody from early years all the way through to higher education. Okay, and in Nandi's question is, I do have a postgraduate diploma in education, but will I be able to get any exemptions? If that's, um, if your previous study has been undertaken as equivalent to what we call the SDQF level 11, um, you might know that as level 7, depending where in the world that you're from, um, and it's been within the last five years, then there's good chance that you would get exemption for that but that's something that we need to look at on application to give you um confer to be able to confirm that with you absolutely and i'd like to add there as well is if you are looking for exemptions do submit the learning outcomes of the modules that you have completed. It does actually make uh, Marie and, and her team a lot easier to assess uh, whether you can get uh, those exemptions. So do get in touch with your academic consultants at Stafford and they'll be able to give you a lot more information on that process. Yeah, absolutely, because it does lengthen the application process if we don't have that to start with. Absolutely. Um, and Linda, your question is about Delta. Uh, Linda has a, um, a Delta, which she completed in 2013, and again asking if she can get the exemptions. Um, but I'm a bit concerned about, about the, the duration because she did it in 2013. Yeah, um, if that's beyond the five-year limit, I'm afraid. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just going to actually, I can see there's actually quite a few of them that are similar. That's why I'm trying to group them together. Um, I'm on the fast track. Uh, will it still be the same duration um, as if I'm doing it part-time um, or is it a shorter duration? No, it's a short duration because you're doubling up the, the amount of study in the time. So the part-time route would be three years if you do come in without any exemption and you go through without any temporary withdrawals, for example. Um, but for the fast track route, we're looking at approximately 20 months for that. 
Um, so it is a much faster route, but it's also much more intense as well. And like I say, you need to make sure that you can, if you're on the fast track route, that you can afford the time of 30 hours of study per week. Correct. And I'm just going to quickly answer Pacific's uh, question because he ha he did actually come in a bit late in the webinar and missed the section on the entry requirements. Um, so Pacific, it's very important uh, that you do submit all your academic um, uh, certificates to your consultant. Uh, the entry requirement is to have a bachelor's degree um, equivalent to a UK level six honours. Um, so we would need to look at your uh, qualifications. And as Marie mentioned, you need to have, um, or currently working in an educational environment, or you would have had some kind of educational experience if you're not currently um, teaching or in an educational environment. Um, so do send us your documents so that we can actually do a pre-assessment and uh, we can then guide you into actually you know, applying for the program. Um, Venetia's uh, um, answer to, to, I think, one of the questions you asked her, um, she does have a bachelor's in fine arts. Um, and, and I think that's where she was asking if she can teach in the art uh, field in primary. Okay, all right. Um, and I think that's something that you need to check depending where on the world you are as to what the teaching requirements are um, and then move forward from that. Okay, and Margot's question um, is about exams, um, and we obviously do not have uh, any examinations in this program, which is a great plus for, for a lot of us, okay, but there are definitely assessments that need to be completed. Okay, um, is, uh, is there any professional development program um, in, in Dundee that is specifically designed to teach maths or can this program assist me in teaching mathematics? Uh, it's not a, we don't focus in on subject areas um, that's linked directly to the curriculum, different subject areas. So it's much broader than that. Um, so we can certainly help you depending on the modules um, that you take, whether you want to place yourself and you're reading um, additional reading around mathematics, we will perhaps give you theories of learning in more general sense, but you can develop that yourself into your area um, of what's going to support you moving forward in your career. Okay, and this is a very popular question, is if I need to take a break or I need to be moving countries, um, is this a possibility? What is the maximum time period that I complete the program then? Okay, I think there's kind of two questions there in one. So, um, yes, you can take a break. You, have, you can exit at any of the exit points and obtain either the certificate or the diploma. Um, but then you can come back within a five-year time scale to complete the MET. Um, if, for, if there's any life circumstances, you might want to put your study on hold and that will for a shorter period of time and still be a student with the University of Dundee and you would take a, a temporary withdrawal for that but there does need to be mitigating circumstances to, to allow that to happen. Um, for, I've forgotten where I was going with the second part of that question. So, Helen, have you got that question again, just so I can pick up the second part? I, to be honest with you, I've actually deleted it because we've oh. actually answered oh, it. Oh, I thought it was, it was about transferring to different oh, countries. That's exactly, it was transfer. If it happens to transfer to another country, um, yes. is that possible? You know, can you take that break? Because obviously moving is quite a daunting um, exercise. So, um, you know, will she be able to have that break and then start uh, the program again once she's settled in a, in a different country? And the answer is yes. We have students moving around the world all the time um, and some do take a break for that reason. Others find that they can continue at that point, but absolutely. 
Okay, and um, Sophia's question is, uh, I do believe that there are workshops in the UAE, which would be great so that I can meet other teachers. Um, but in the event that I cannot attend this, um, am I really missing anything very important? And will I get any information uh, that was covered in the workshop? Yes, we all the materials are placed online, so uh, you can access those materials. Uh, you're never going to get the same sort of um, experience as if you're there in person because there's lots of discussion that goes on between students as well as students and tutors so it does miss out on that but actually but the information itself is available to you it's made available at the point of the workshop okay and my final project or, or dissertation how many words do I have to uh, submit and uh, um, is it really very difficult? Do people actually fail this? Okay. Occasionally people fail, but occasionally people fail because they don't always follow the advice that they've been given or they don't take up the opportunity for that tutor support because they think we're too busy and we're never too busy to support you. So that's the first thing I would say. And um, most often people do pass um, because they are listening. And also you've been building up to that throughout the rest of the program. You know, the, the dissertation is the culmination of all the learning that's taken place before then. So you should be in a very good position to take that. So when I tell you the word count is 15,000 words, that might sound like a huge task to you right now because you may not um, have had that sort of experience previously. All the other assignments are 5,000 words leading up to that. Um, so you'll, have, you'll get that experience of writing 5,000 words and that might sound quite daunting to start with, but you soon find out that the words disappear very quickly. And even on the 15,000 words, that's still the case. By the time you've broken that 15,000 words down into the different chapters that's required, it disappears very quickly. And one of the things that the students say that they find challenging is actually keeping in that word count um, because they want to go so much over. And they'll say, can you not just lift it to 20,000 words? Um, and the answer is no, because it's a skill to keep into that word count as well. So it might sound like a mammoth task right now, but by the time you get to that point, you will be prepared for it. Good. And um, a question that, again, is, is quite a common one. Uh, what is the difference between a part-time and a full-time route? And in your opinion, which one would probably be, be most beneficial? That depends on, I mean, the main difference is the time scale that you have to do this in, because like I say, the part-time route is 15 hours of study per week, approximately, um, and the fast-track route is uh, the 30 hours per week, approximately. Some people may be able to do it slightly faster, other people will take longer, depending on the speed that you can read, you can write, you can absorb, and, and all of those things. Um, you very, have, you very much have to think of your lifestyle. If you are working full time, it's going to be very difficult to do the fast track route. If you are going to, if you are working full time and have a family, you've also got to think about your family commitments as well. For me as a student, and I study myself right now, to be able to absorb and to take in all the things that I need to do as a student, I would always recommend the, the slower route of the part-time to be to be able to make the most of the opportunities that that affords. Good and um, Jenna has joined us from from Canada however she's running off um, to do some more teaching obviously because of the time difference um, but one of the questions and I'm just going to answer this um, is, you know, is this presentation available? Um, yes, it is available. We will be sending the link out to all of you. Um, so if you have missed uh, sections of this presentation, you'll be able to obviously look at it at your leisure. So uh, Jenna, do not worry. We'll be sending that through to everyone. 
Okay. Um, Mohammed's question is uh, also a very popular one. Does the degree certificate state uh, online distance learning? And uh, can I actually attend the graduation in the UK? Okay. Um, no, it doesn't. Uh, there's no difference in the degree certificate, whether you're learning at a distance or whether you're learning here on campus. It's all the same. As for graduation, yes, we would love you to come over and attend graduation. You'd have a very warm welcome. In fact, it's graduation week this week. The sun is shining, the marquees are up, the campus looks beautiful, and I'm so looking forward to getting to our degree ceremony this week. So we would absolutely welcome you to those. Okay, and Venetia, um, I think you maybe came in a little bit late when we did the entry requirements. Just to answer your question, you don't need to be currently working in a teaching environment, but you need to demonstrate that you have had some kind of, of, of teaching in the past, for example. So we'd love to see your CV. Do send that through to us as soon as possible, and then we can guide you on that as well. Okay. Um, Right, I have been in the industry in education for over 15 years. Uh, started off um, basically as a, as a junior teacher. I'm now uh, a principal of two schools running simultaneously. I do not have a degree. Um, so will you be able to accept me on my vast years of working experience? Unfortunately not, we do need a degree um, qualification, but I would always say speak to the team at Stafford, your consultant there, because they may be able to advise you on degree um, qualifications which may not require the full study. I don't know, Helen, that's something that you can advise on there. Absolutely. So do get in touch with me or, or your academic consultant and we'll be able to advise you on, uh, a pro on programs or levels that, that we can, we can uh, try and get you into. Okay. Um, again, a very popular question is, is the University of Dundee program internationally recognized? Um, I am planning on uh, leaving the Middle East and going to teach in Singapore. Um, so will this be recognized for me um, in that country? Absolutely. Uh, we currently have students studying with us who are living and working in Singapore, but also it's a master's degree. So it's, it is internationally recognized um, and Dundee does have a global reputation. Yeah. Okay. And why does this course not qualify me as a teacher? Why is this not a um, almost a, almost a QTS uh, qualification? Yeah, it is a, a professional development qualification rather than a teaching practice qualification because we don't come out and observe you in the classroom with your teaching practice and giving you feedback. There's no assessment in relation to your classroom practice through observation. Okay, and Johnny's question is, um, can I start on a, on a full-time route and then change if, if I do not uh, manage the pace of the program? Yeah, sure. I mean, you can you have the first couple of weeks to change that um, because we realise that sometimes even just you know seeing the materials and that people will quickly realise whether they can or can't continue on the fast track route. Or, um, but other than that, then we can move you at the end of the first semester. So if you feel that you've struggled on that first semester to get the two assignments in and do the work towards them, then we can change you then. Um, so there are certain times when we can do that and vice versa if you start on part-time or want to go fast track as well. And Bavesha's question is, um, if I choose a specialisation in the onset of my application and then I realise that I'm really not enjoying it, can I switch to another specialisation? It depends on what you choose and what you want to switch to and which modules you've undertaken. So, for example, if you choose educational leadership, but then you want to go to inclusion, for example, you need to be able to undertake the inclusion module 
if you're at a point in time in your study where that's not possible, then we wouldn't be able to transfer, transfer you over. The only exception to that is if you wanted to transfer to the leading learning teaching the generic award, and then you can transfer onto that no matter at what point of study that you're on. Okay, and uh, Muhammad's got, got a, quite an interesting question. Um, with regards to the assignments, um, it's, I understand that it may be way different than just writing a simple essay. So do you recommend working on my academic writing skills as well as my research skills now? Um, is there a certain way that I should be doing that? Or um, do I get this taught you know, throughout my program? It does come in the programme. We certainly wouldn't be um, asking you right at the beginning to carry out research skills type things because you're not expected to collect data and report on that at the early stages. That comes at the dissertation point. Um, I would always advise any work that you can do, no matter whether you've just come out of a, a, another piece of study into this one or not, is just to, to start to understand what master's level learning is and also what it means to be a critical thinker, reader or writer. There's lots online about that. Um, and if it's something that you're worried about, again, there are things online, but also um, your academic consultants at staff would maybe be able to advise you on something there. Um, but it is built into the programme as well. We don't expect you to come into the programme as experts. You, you know, we develop those skills as you go through, but there's no harm in looking online, seeing what's there and just getting yourself a little bit prepared for the study. Absolutely. And um, I've just seen one last question by Pacific, um, who, well, actually it's a statement. He's already sent me his CV into my email box. Thank you so much, Pacific. I, I will definitely be able to look through that um, tomorrow in more detail and, and get back to you on, on pre-assessment. Okay. <laughs> That's excellent. Um, well, I've managed to actually group all the questions uh, together, so uh, we've actually gone through them quite uh, quite effectively. Again, Marie, thank you so much for joining us. It was an absolute pleasure having you with us again, and it was great having all of you on this webinar. Lovely questions. Thank you very much. And uh, as I said, I will actually be sending through uh, the link to this presentation, um, hopefully, uh, tomorrow or the next day. Okay, so have a wonderful weekend, Marie, and enjoy your with the graduation. Oh, and you. I hope that we will see all of you at the workshop. Do send in those applications as soon as possible. There are limited seats available, so um, we want to try and get you that very important unconditional offer. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you to you again, Helen, as always. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye.